Welcome to another segment of KISS, that is K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, sir. Keep it simple, senorita. Keep it simple, sisters and saints of God. Praise God. We have another blessed subject for you today. And the house is full with guests once again. Praise God. We have the women of God here sharing on a great subject called caregiving. Caregiving a subject, praise God, that a lot of times uh, is not get addressed in the church, in the ministry. And a lot of times we don't seem to understand uh, the art of caregiving. I believe it's a blessing to be a caregiver. Praise God. If we need a Bible scripture today, uh, I was looking at the book of Timothy. Timothy, 1 Timothy, the 5th chapter and the 8th verse. Praise God, the KJV first. But if any provide not for his own house, he hath denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel. Uh, the NIV speaks the same verse. Anyone who do not provide for their relatives, and especially for their own household, has denied the faith, and is worse than an unbeliever. Praise God. I myself didn't realize there was so much involved in the Word of God because the Word just didn't come out as their caregiver. Right. But it is all woven into the, the, the Word as you would see as we go forth today. Uh, we have Dr. Fitton with us, and we also have uh, Wendy Landis, praise God, and also Marcella William Norton Ash, Norton William Ash, praise God. And the author, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Praise God, starting with Dr. Fitton to my left. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. LaJewel Fitton from Macedonia uh, Missionary Baptist Church on uh, South Gettysburg. And how will be in touch with you? Okay, and you can get in touch with me, LaJewel917 at AOL.com. I'm Winder Jean Morgan. I go to Mount Zion Transformation Ministries. I work out on the altar ministry and I'm a Sunday school teacher. And you can get in touch with me at winderlanders at yahoo.com. I'm Marcella Ash. I am an author of books for children and the entire family. You can connect with me on 937-760-6168. You can also email me at Marcella Ash at sbcglobal.net. And that's it. Praise God. Well, you know, there's different forms of caregiving, as you all well know. Amen. And as I was looking through, I had courts, got questions on the internet. And to open and break the ice, uh, because that's a question that many would have today is, that is, what does the Bible say about caring for our old parents? Was one thing that I was able to read. The Bible has much to say about caring for elderly parents and other family members who are not able to care for themselves. The early Christian church acted as a social service agency for other believers. They cared for the poor, the sick, the widows, and the orphans who had no one else to care for them. Christians who had family members is in need were expected to meet those needs. Unfortunately, caring for our parents in their old age is no longer an obligation that many of us are willing to accept. And then again, question said uh, for the guy question, what does the Bible say about caregiving? In the world of professional health, health care, Caregiving involves the detection of deterrence or treatment of any type of illness by a doctor, nurse, or other health care worker. However, a caregiver can also be anyone who provides assistance and support to a family member or friend who has physical, psychological, or developmental needs. Caregiving is practiced by parents, who rear their young children, friends who care for a disabled neighbor, and adult children who bring their elderly parents to live with them. As such, caregiving is absolutely biblical. Though the Bible never uses the word caregiving 
to describe selfless acts of love and mercy toward foreign family members and friends, there is no doubt the Bible supports the giving of care. Praise God. And you ladies I know have all been involved in it. Praise God. And have shared in caregiving. I don't know if Dr. Fitton wants to start out with us today or, uh, and, and share some little bit on caregiving and your experience. Okay. My experience has been with my father. My father is 95, almost 96 on Thanksgiving, this Thanksgiving. Um, he has become a little disabled and taking care of himself. We don't like him to use the stove or try to cook because sometimes he leaves something on. Uh, one time we saw smoke on the wall. <laughs> what is this? You know, we asked him, oh, I just uh, left out of the room. I left something on. And we decided that it's time for uh, the children to step in to help him, you know, prepare his food, wash his clothes, take the trash, and different things of that sort. So um, he was okay with uh, doing his personal care. He could do that. Uh, bathing and grooming he could do that except we'd have someone to cut his hair um, and then we also knew that uh, he was able to dress himself and he also needed uh, a little help with some exercise so we had Jim City to come in and they would do exercises with him a few in the apartment and a few just walking down the hall and they wanted to keep his legs mobile because when he was in um, rehab, he said, you know, I feel like I can't walk uh, anymore, but it was because he was just laying in the bed so long. Mm. So then the basic food preparation, sometimes uh, some of us would uh, maybe fix uh, lasagna or something where he could, you know, heat it up in the microwave. We would allow him to put his food in the microwave, but the oven was out of the question. Uh, I would come by on uh, some mornings to uh, do his breakfast. I had uh, other sisters that would do that on their day, do the breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so usually I would cook the breakfast and clean up the kitchen, wash the dishes, and uh, then I come back, I go home, come back and get his lunch for him. And then in the evening time, make sure he has something to eat. Mm -hmm. So, and then a lot of times um, he would ask me, could you get this at the store or do a little shopping for me? And uh, several times I would asked him to, you know, let's, let's go together because, you know, he doesn't like to go. So we went to Kroger's and I said, well, you can just sit right here. One time he went around the store with me, but it just took so long because he was moving so slow. And I said, well, Daddy, you, you can sit up there and just relax. I had the list. I knew what to get for him. Um, housekeeping was another thing, you know. Uh, vacuuming the floor or you know wiping off the tables or dusting the tables or making up his bed and he would tell you you forgot to make up my bed this morning <laughs> I said oh I said you want me to make up the bed and he said yes because he likes his room to be neat uh, then laundry a couple of times I did it in his apartment you had to pay in the apartment, so I just started taking it home. And my other sisters would do the same thing. They would take his laundry home, and uh, if it was jeans or something, uh, they would iron it before they came back. And basically, you know, we just wanted to make sure he was comfortable and uh, enough people were in and out of his apartment. He has grandchildren, a lot of them. Uh, but when school starts, that kind of slacks off. So it was basically the sisters that uh, were taking care of his needs during the day, like doctor's appointments, uh, heart doctors, whatever doctor he had to go to. We had to make sure that he could get to the doctor and uh, see the doctor whenever scheduled. So sometimes he'll say, oh, I don't need to go. I said, well, they scheduled you and we're gonna follow up on this appointment because 
the doctor wouldn't have scheduled it if he didn't want to check up on you. But because of his age, every time he has an appointment, we make sure that he gets to his uh, appointment. Like I said, he will be 96 November the 22nd. Great. That's great. So uh, we have to, you know, watch out and do what we can for So you people work together. Yes. Your we family work, to work together. Right. The mm -hmm. uh, sisters, the siblings, we do. Wow. I have a sister in uh, Columbus. Mm -hmm. She comes down on the weekend. And then I have uh, three sisters here. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, one sister took care of him. And Thursday and Friday, I took care of him. It and works better. Yeah, it, 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 it is does. good like that. And my sister uh, here, if she has something to do, my sister from Columbus would always come in and uh, help Daddy out. So uh, we, we did pretty good. So you had yeah. to deal with the psychological as well as the physical. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't say that. But sometimes, you know, he'll get a long-winded about something or say things that, Mm, I, I'd never heard him say before, and I just think that because of his age, you know, uh, he will say things, you know, that uh, he has never said before. Mm -hmm. And I said, what did you say? Mm -hmm. I got to do this, and I got to do that, like that. I said, well, Daddy, you don't have to do anything. You know that we're going to do this, you know, for you, mm -hmm. like that. Y'all think I can't do anything. That's just <laughs> how he would talk. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he feels like he can still, you know, do uh, most things. But and you don't want to strip mm -hmm. them of their independence. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And, you know, and I kind of thought that was kind of happening because he used to have a car and he said, well, I just let it go. One of the daughters thought right. that it was time for him not to drive. And that was probably about seven years ago. So he doesn't have a car. He doesn't drive anymore. But you don't want to take all of his independence right. away because... Um, He'll feel like he can't do right. if you take everything. And stop exactly. doing it. Yeah. Right, you he know, will. The, the shocking things, uh, we'll probably talk about it a little later, there's some shocking things that you may find out in, in uh, caregiving, mm -hmm. especially yeah. to family members. Uh, th th yeah, you know, I, I just want to say that, you know, the scripture that I um, based taking care of nursing homes, because our world is an STNA for... 15 plus years. Okay. And so I had to begin to, I'm going to just read this scripture. Though I speak with the tongues of men mm -hmm. and of angels and have not Char charity, mm -hmm. I become as a sounding brass and yes. a tingling cymbal. Yes. So I, I found out that God had chosen me to do, do this type of work okay. because I didn't necessarily have to like the character of the person, mm -hmm. but I had to love them. Yes. And so it helped me to get to do that. And so my mom, mm -hmm. I, I was anointed to take care of my mother, who was very independent at the time. It started early. I'd go to the grocery store, get groceries for her, take them to our house, things of that nature. But the older she got, I had to move her from a nursing facility. She stayed there for about a week and a half. And she moved in with me and my husband. And I found out when my mom, she would always, I would say, Mom, I love you. She said, do you really? Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand it, but she was coming from a spiritual aspect of it. She, I had to find out, you, you can't love me like the world. You have to love me with the love of Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so that helped me to take care of my mom. And it was, sometimes it was difficult. <laughs> and I must say that because me being independent and very strong-willed, she was like that, you know, telling me how to do this, how to do that. And I was like, okay. I had to move flesh out the way. Yeah. You, you understand what I'm saying? I had to stop looking at it. You're my mom, you in my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I had to look at it through his eyes. I did this because I'm teaching you mm -hmm. how to grow with me and you're growing in love for her mm -hmm. because I thought I loved her. But really when it came to taking care of her and she became dependent on me to, uh, to bathe her, to feed her and well, you got to have love to do that. You have to have a godly love to care for parents. Yep. Okay. Regardless, I had worked in a nursing home for years. Yes. But when it came to my mom, it was nothing. 
it did not prepare me for my mom. Mm -hmm. It was so different because it was a constant. See, I could leave the job and go home. But she moved in with me and it was a 24 hour. I could be in the bed, Jean, you know, Lulu, come here. And, I, and then after I go out, Ma, I love you. Do you really? Uh -huh. But then I can say when she took her rest, she said, you really do love me, Jeannie. Uh -huh. You really love me. You know what you make me think of when you think, uh, when you said that? I thought about Jesus when he talked to Peter. He said, Peter, love is thy name. And he said, yes, Lord, feed my sheep. Yeah. Peter, love is thy name. Feed my lamb. He continued, I like it when you saying that, because we can say a love with a lip love. But it's something that is a lot deeper it is. than what we can say. And sometimes we go through life saying, I love you, I love you, yes. I love you, we love you. Mm -hmm. But yes. love, yes. unconditional, yes. is a, continu a completely it different is. It is. set of understanding. And that is a challenge, that's a test that we go through. And I, I thought about when you said it, I couldn't help say it. <laughs> that's what Christ asked Peter. Peter, love it, I mean, yeah. because I feel like, yes, that's my first course, that's what you expect, that's what you expect someone to say. say yeah. But do you really, really love, love me? me? Yeah. Do you really? When the time yeah. the road, when all things fail, do you <laughs> really <laughs> love me? And one of the hardest caregivers, and I say, is with family members. Because family yes, members it is. expect more. Hmm. Or you yeah, understand That's true. Rather than yeah. you said you did SDNA and uh, yes, different. it's different. It's it was different. Displaced. Yes, they expect you were doing a job, but they would not even share certain things, even in the challenge of you love me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and as hard as I've been, as bad as do you still really you love, love me? me? Yeah, I know I'm not yes. what I used, used to, to be, be. And, mm -hmm. but do you That's really? That's what she was saying. Right. Yes, right. can you continue to love me with all mm. my shortcomings Good. and my failures? Right. That long suffering. Oh my God. Yes. Now yeah. we're reaching caregiving. Yes. Right. And I'm glad we have to show a lot of somebody's out there today that's going through that right today. Yes. There are something to wonder does everybody go through what I'm going through? And I know we have different yes. medias that yes. we meet. Um, Sister uh, Marcel Ash here has come out with a book, including the poetry and all the other. Yes. And it's such a beautiful book. It has so many things in it. Even addressing the, uh, the, 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 what is it, uh, the uh, Medicare and Medicaid, yes. the financial part. Power of attorneys, and yes. A she lot has of a lot of information in the book. Go yes. In the blind. But God has put it upon her heart mm -hmm. to share with the public more than just sharing some of the things that even I, I even had a little something in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. But more yeah. that, you know, a lot of times people see things on the surface. And they, oh yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. But you really know they don't really understand. They really don't. Until, and you began to talk to them, and then you said, they had no idea. But they had a transparent or a, 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 a ghost of looking at things. Right. But they never really, you never know. I think it's old, I need to say, say you cannot complain until you walked in that man's moccasin right. amount. True, true. Jeez. From the outside, it seemed like, oh, I could do that. I, 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 I got that. It's, yeah. Many times, uh, a lot of times when we worked in factories and other jobs, a lot of times, I have done jobs and working and, and people said, uh, train someone else. Can you do it? Oh, yeah, I got it. I got it. You sure you got it? Yeah, I got it, man. Go on. And you walk, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because they felt like with a mind and the heart they thought they was ready. Now, I think about Peter again. He, he brings a lot of things to us, doesn't he? Yes. He actually was the same disciple to say he would die for Christ. Yes, he did. He said that I would die for you. I know President wants to say he'd take a bullet, but that's you know, well, yeah. another thing. <laughs> but Peter actually thought he would die he for Christ. That. Yes, he did. And he would have died if he could have done it his way. True. He had to throw it out. He would have died if I could go down doing it my way, I'd do it. But when God, and when Christ taking that ear and put it back up on the enemy, it's taking all the fight out of Peter. I love him, but 
Lord, I can't help people that you, you helping the enemy. How can I help you? True. Praise God. And we say not the best for last, but we come to also let Ms. Marcella William Ash share and the author of the great book that we have here, Love, Love Locked In. in. When strong, strong call, call my name, boy, that, 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 that's the part. That's it. That's when, it. Strong strong. when strong, call my right. name. Mm -hmm. It was all right <laughs> when it was so sort of secret with whisper, and we True. thought. Yeah. But the strong part is when you really experience yeah. the bitter, yes. the good, the bad. Wow. All right, introduce praise yourself. The, praise the Lord, Bishop. Well, I'm Marcella Ash, and. Uh, I want to first give honor to God, who is the head of my life. And this assignment, this uh, opportunity that you have presented me with and bringing aboard some of the people that have submitted their journey in this book. Thank you so much again oh for being a part of this and thank you for having us here. Um, caregiving, you sometimes I wrote this book to support people that are caregiving and for the millenniums that are coming along that don't have a clue about what to do with their elderly. Um, we need to know that caregivers also need to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. If yes. you don't take care of yourself, you cannot be efficient with taking care of the people that you have been assigned to. Caregiving, uh, I have some scriptures I would like to read. Uh, that may help you know that this is an assignment when you take care of somebody. It's not just a job. It's an assignment that the Creator has already prepared for you way before you were born. Mm -hmm. He said He knew mm -hmm. before you were in your mother's womb. Uh -huh. He know where yeah. you're going. Uh -huh. And He said, remember your Creator in the days of your youth. Uh -huh. And being old is proof of fear and evil to warn an other of pitfalls. But best yet is listening with understanding and having faith in God. And, and even to your old age, I am He according to Isaiah 46 and 4, and even to whore hairs will I carry you. I have made and I will bear, even I will carry and deliver yes. you. I have been young, according to Psalms 37 and 25, and now am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. De Deuteronomy 32 and 7, remember the days of old. Mm -hmm. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee, thou elders, and they will tell thee. And to make all men, according to Ephesians 3 and 9, all men see what the fellowship of the mystery is, from which the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, with the ancient is wisdom, and the length of days is understanding. The glory of young men is their strength, and the beauty of old men is the gray head, according to Proverbs 20 and 29, and the fear of the Lord prolonged days, but the year of the wicked shall be shortened. I feel that God has assigned each one of us an assignment when it comes to the elderly. I am presently taking care of my mother, and she's in my home. She's been with me for three years, and during this, I have learned to sit with her and find out what I was like growing up. And what we do understand is the parent, we leave from the stroller to the wheelchair sometimes. But we got to remember each child is different. Each parent is different. And you want to address it so the parent never lose their independence. If you let them lose their independence, you lose the parent. If you let yourself be, become a fall in with the caring of your parent or your significant others. You can get up one morning and look in the mirror and you won't see anybody. And that's in this book too. If you give more than you can afford to give, you are a slave to anything you can't say no to. If you can't say no to this or no to that, you become a slave to that. And sometimes I feel like I'm a hostage in my own home. And <laughs> you know, you yeah. just have to yeah. make rules. You make rules where that person can still feel comfortable, but it's not easy. Nobody ever said the journey would be easy. Nobody ever said caring True. for a baby would be easy. No baby is the same. Mm -hmm. Your baby, this baby, all of us were different. Yes. Your elderly are the same. 
there is no elderly person that is exactly the same. So you address them. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you get them together and you make them, you press them for what they got to go through. Because while they're going through, you are too. Mm -hmm. And you need that support. And that's why this book is here. So you can be supported in what you're doing. And your journey can be something that God can bless you with and let you know that it's anointing. When you, it's an anointing yes, it when a person can have an assignment of doing the, it's an assignment mm -hmm. and when you have a godly assignment and caring for others whether it be in a nursing facility whether it be in your home or, or whatever when you do this assignment god got you mm -hmm. he has yeah. you know i look a lot of times you find on both sides that old question that sticks in your mind why me oh yeah yes uh -huh. both the person that mm -hmm. is sick that's been very independent Why? all of their Why? lives. Mm -hmm. They battle on a regular basis. Why me? Why I have to be sick? Yes. And they be trying to examine themselves. That's and okay. sometimes the caregiver that falls on their limb and their plate. Right. Why me? Oh my God, everybody else around the could. Why has mm -hmm. this falling upon me? Now this is my belief. Everything that happened to us was foreordained. I think about Mordecai when he told Queen Esther that when she spared the Jews because she became the king's wife, surely God made her beautiful for the queen to want the king to want her as a wife, but she had a purpose, purpose. way before it mm. came to that. God has called all of us. Uh, we may not like the the, the things that we sure. go through. We may not like so. What God? Why me? That's that. Why me? Come back up again. But I can say for martial ass, since I know her for so many years, the thing that she's involved with started when she was a child. Even to the point there was a man next door named Mr. John Jones. <laughs> and she would go over there and favor to him, and other little cousin would stop her and pull her back. You don't want to go to old man. She was turn around and spank her, and uh, I'm going to Mr. Jones. Jones yeah. <laughs> what am I saying? My mother often said, if you sat there, and watch your child, even in the cradle. The anointing is on them, even as a child. child. Yes. You don't know why they do certain things. You don't know why, uh, even to me, hey, look at me, did I just start talking? Yeah, I was shy, people don't believe it. <laughs> but most time as a child, I had the thing of, every time you ask me a question, I had to give you an example. And well, one day I got always talk, just answer, spit it out. But that wasn't what I was about. When I got older and God called me to the ministry, I realized a little short stories I was talking about was like the parable that Christ made. Mm -hmm. So what am I saying? We may find that why me and why am I caught in this? Why I have to do this? Why I seem to be so alone in doing this? Because that's your anointing. That's your assignment. That's, that's right. And the that's thing okay. is, nobody else can do it like you. God had prepared that's you true. True. to do that. Right. And we may look at, well, why can't you help me out there? You're mm -hmm. pulling them out of their anointing to your anointing. Now, a good example of that is Moses. God had called Moses to lead the children of Israel, but he said, I can't speak plain. Hmm. He drug his brother in there. Yeah, Aaron, yes. It almost caused him a shipwreck too, didn't it? Yes, yes it did. Because God had called him Moses. to be the leader. And like I said, all you need, you have it. But yet and still, we get to fish around. Well, God, why me? Praise God. But all of your life, if you stop, and you know, sometimes we don't really stop and examine it. Sometimes we're so busy, we don't have time to examine our past. And if you began to, I mean, some people keep diaries and so forth and so on, but if you kept a journal and began to mark down your life, the things you've done throughout your life, you would find out none of it's by accident. Nope. It was all falling to come together. Yeah. Simon, <laughs> you remember when we used to ask the good Lord to give us wisdom? Remember when we yeah. used to pray, yeah. Lord, give me wisdom. Uh -huh. Give me wisdom. I want wisdom. But then once you get it, you got to understand you need to know how to use it. Right. You know, another thing about wisdom I find, when God gives you wisdom, the problem you have is because everybody else don't understand where you're at. 
They're not and, supposed to. But a lot foolish. of times that That's caused it. a problem. That's right. That's and foolishness. that caused a problem with a lot yes. of people. Yes. Well, y'all can't y'all see it? No, they can't see it see? because they're not where <laughs> you, you are. are. You are. True. And I know Paul told the, uh, the church there, he said, I would give you meat. You've been here so long, oh, I would I give you meat, meat but you're still mm-hmm. on milk. Mm-hmm. You're still trying to believe. Your babies, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, it, 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 I, I'm not going to say it's a bad thing, but I know what you're saying. A lot of times when God, the thing you ask for, the wisdom, but when God give it to you, you didn't realize everybody was gonna, not going to be on the same page the with you. Right. That's the part, yeah. Even That's as true. a minister, sometimes I, I, I spoke things and even the other clergy looked at me crazy like, he's obviously crazy, what he's talking about. But then year, 10, 20 years later, you're saying the same thing. Mm-hmm. Should I be angry at them? No. They hadn't grown to the point that God had carried me. So when God carried you ahead, and you have to be a leader, you have to understanding, he didn't promise he's going to give you all your friends understanding. Right. <laughs> true. That is so true. That's what we want. We want somebody to say, hey, I agree with you. True. <laughs> it is not. No. Uh, but when they don't understand the wisdom that God gave you, you get a little bitter. What's wrong with these people? Can't they see? No, they can't see what you're going to say. No, I, I agree with you on that, you know, because I have siblings uh-huh. and I was listening to the doctor talk about, you know, siblings. And I, I really did. I desired for my siblings to step in mm-hmm. and help me. But it wasn't for them to help me. They may come over and stay an hour uh, and go out the door, whereas... I, I was a 24-7 individual. I was like, oh, oh, come on now, y'all siblings, this is your mom just like she was mine, you know, but it wasn't for them. You know, I had to acknowledge who God was and he gave me the understanding of why me. Because uh, when my mom moved in with me, he said, today salvation has come to this house. And I'll never forget that. I was like, okay, sitting around her table, and we're all trying to decide who's going to do what. And she's looking at me, I'm looking at her. We knew it was not, no, not me and you. That's how it was. And so Penny, you know, my sister's Penny, she was like, okay, we'll do it like this. And then I said, well, Mom, you can come stay with me. She said, oh, no. (laughs) And I said, I know how you feel. And until I, I had said, I said to my mom, I said, Mom, the Lord mm-hmm. told me to tell you you're to come and live with me. Mm-hmm. Instantly, she understood that. Mm-hmm. She said, the Lord said it. I'm going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Other than that, uh-uh, we would have been, I don't know. Yes, but see, that's, that's, that's the thing is, and whether we realize it or not, to bring somebody in your anointed position were called chaos. You may want them there, but when they get there, you find like, boy, I wish I never had brought you in here. I Sometimes. never brought you because you're not yeah. thinking. Mm-hmm. You're not understanding where I'm going with this. True. And it's just like they say, you can't put two women in the kitchen. Right. They might get along in one day, but you put them in there <laughs> in the same house, in the same kitchen, it's just not going to work. It work at all. And you know what you're saying that I, I was uh, thinking on, uh, the blessings and the cursings. Mm-hmm. You're blessed when you go in. You're blessed when you come out. Your fields is blessed. You're blessed. But then you want to take your blessings and go to a cursed, a cursed thing. Yes. You know, and I had to realize that. It was a blessing, and I now I would not trade taking care of my mother yeah. because it was a spiritual. It's a spiritual journey. Yes. But like you said, a lot of the people that didn't help you, they missed out on right. what you had. Right. Yeah, they missed out, they on, missed out on that mother daughter relationship and just you know just sitting all this time. You know, I could go in and out my mother's home, but to be with her 24 mm-hmm. seven. Mm-hmm. Sometimes just reading the word with my mom yes. or cooking and she'll sit, you know, and my husband, he'd bake a cake. She claimed the whole cake. It was, <laughs> this is her cake. Yeah. And she didn't want us to have any of the cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I would try to feed her sometime, what she would do, she wouldn't let me feed her. Mm-hmm. She would accept him feeding her. Mm-hmm. So I knew it was 
all God. Yeah. Yes. And with it being all God, I wouldn't trade it for nothing because the Bible says, God, weary in well, well doing. doing, for in due season yeah. you shall reap. Well, if you don't faint, and I didn't faint. But you I know stuck, something, yeah. we don't, we're not going to forget uh, Bishop's uh, part in the book either, uh, either um, spousal caregiving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And spousal help like your husband my right, husband right. your husband mm -hmm. they are such a blessing yes. to us and you have to be on the same page because a man that know God he's got to know where his wife is going right. with this kind of commitment mm -hmm. and a man that has to take care of a wife or child or whatever mm -hmm. Uh, we can't leave the men out either. I mean, you know, women That's are true. Always, that is true. Women yeah. are always good at doing what they're doing, yes. but there are men that are making really, really, really sacrifices that they have probably prepared something else in their life with you, with you, with me, true. with you, so true. That, you, that they thought would go the way that they would like for it to go. And because of your commitment, they have been nice and said, okay, I'm going to help you. Mm -hmm. So we're going to thank God for them. Right. We're going to thank God like for that. the people that help us. <laughs> yes, and, and the thing is, that's, the Bible says all are getting to get understanding. understanding. Now, out of all the things, we may be looking at some of the negative, but have you ever stopped looking at the positive things yeah. that God has blessed? Mm -hmm. And not only mm -hmm. that, things beyond, beyond that. what you're going through right now. We all love the mountaintop. But there's always a valley before you get to the mountain. Right. Praise yeah. God. And sometimes going through the valley prepares you for the mountaintop experience that God had prepared for you. Trust in the Lord with your whole heart and lean not to your own understanding. That's in all thy ways acknowledge. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And that's the thing is acknowledgement. Now we're talking to Christian people. I know a lot of times people will not be Christian, but still that devotion. And that's why a lot of times I look at some of the marriages and a lot of young people don't want to follow. That old way of honor and obey, to yeah. death do we part. Wait a minute, can I change that? Mm -hmm. And a lot of them now, as I said in the book, they are making up their own vows, but it's not a vow of commitment. Mm -hmm. It's because you look good now. You look, oh boy, look at her. She's shot. <laughs> huh? Don't get old. We don't look at the sick day. Oh boy, no. he is shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't realize he, uh, that man might become impotent. Mm -hmm. Can you still love, love him in that man. situation? That woman, praise God. I used to tell the young people uh, when I was counseling in marriage, I said, You love her because she looked good, but if she got in a car accident and destroyed all that face and that good look, can you still love the person? Which a lot of times people do not think about. They love what they see and what it appear to be. Mm -hmm. But can you love that soul as God love it when it's not any longer attractive? When it's no longer uh, uh, the big strong mama that used to whip you and keep you in line? Mm -hmm. Can we still love that uh, I'm adultery or, or what you know? What's that God said? Un, un, uh, what, what word I'm looking for? Un diluted or diluted. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said it before. Unconditional is no more. Unconditional. Right. Yeah. That is that is not on condition. Yeah. Is that love is not it's on not. condition. And it's today, so a lot of people don't know what love is, and we have redefined the word love. Right now, with some of the younger and older generation, you mention love, the first thing popping in your mouth, sex. Mm -hmm. so you want to love me? Mm -hmm. And sometimes for the heck, you know, have fun. And sometimes uh, with church, the new congregation, I'm around and so forth. I would say it if the Lord allowed me to say it. You know something? I would really love to see somebody make love. And I'd be quiet for a second. You could imagine where the minds of the people went. Mm -hmm. He wanted to see somebody Talk make love. Right. But then I would bounce back and I said, my Bible tell me that God, God is love. Is right. I would love to see you make God. In other words, what I'm saying. But yeah. because we have changed the definition of good and true language, that's why the Word of God be so muddled. People don't understand it anymore. That when we do these things that God has called us to do, we might call it caregiving, we give it a different name, but it goes all the way back to love. God's love language in 1 Corinthians 13. 
Yes, yes, it's yes. God's love language. And you know, the interesting thing, and I'm not going to tell you, the interesting thing is <coughs> my looking and studying, because when I look at a subject, I look at the subject. I don't try to point one area, because I know the reason I bring different guests in is because we get different angles. Yes. And a lot of times people say, if you ain't said the way I said, I don't know. Yeah. And if you're in the Sunday school, I know you're in the Sunday school, some of you too. <laughs> people are so set in their ways, if she starts saying it a different way, oh, that ain't right, that's not the way it is. But my analogy is baking a cake. We may all know how to bake a cake, right? But you might start with your wedding greens, your eggs, your, uh, your 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 flavor, your milk, and I may start with my flour and my uh, flour, and my, right. uh, my flour, and my, my baking, baking soda, right. and all my dry ingredients. Uh -huh. True. But eventually, we it's both want to have a cake, cake. right? Mm -hmm. Right. And the interesting things when we come into group, coming from different areas, hopefully somebody can say, "Oh, I can understand what he she's saying," but. I didn't quite understand what he was talking about. Amen. Regardless of whether you understood what one individual here spoke or not, hopefully the conclusion is you got something out of From the discussion. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's what it's all about. Now, I, one thing I was looking when I was looking over this uh, uh, caregiving, another thing is that uh, from the God of Question .org, where I got some of my words mm -hmm. there. It said, God commands to honor one's parents, include the obligation to care for their needs when the time comes. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees who had a system to bypass this obligation and thereby allow adult children to avoid caregiving. Why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, honor your father and mother and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say, now that's what they changed, you know how we changed the word. Pharisees even back then. But you say, Jesus said, that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God, they are not to honor their father or mother with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. Jesus called them, you hypocrites. The Pharisees were lying in their own pockets with money that should have gone to providing care to the elderly. And Jesus' word against this practice were harsh. And I never seen that in caregiving until that was shared in that article there. We think honor means just, oh, respect, I said yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Honor goes a lot farther. Yeah, yes, it does. Than just a yes, sir, mm -hmm. or yes, ma'am. Yes. Honor goes hand in hand in caring. A lot of times, parents, when they began to uh, have children, sometimes they were so busy working, taking care of, providing for, that they missed a lot of the things mm -hmm. of that child. And guess what they make it up at? Grandchildren. Yes, that's so true. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, I do too. They miss so much. Great <laughs> Yes. Oh, they're cute. The first step. Oh, my yes. goodness. The first yes. word. Oh, and on the reverse there, and I know you all understand that, mm -hmm. on the reverse First. there, that person, they get a chance to look at their parent mm -hmm. and care for them and their loved one and care for them when no one else seemed to be there to give it. The Good Samaritan? Mm -hmm. That wasn't even anyone can to him. And some of the leaders that went right past him, went for their business, taking care of their business, but he didn't worry about it. He picked the man up. Caregiving, him, right. Carried him to the end, paid for him, didn't know anything about him. But you cannot, old song, you just saying you can't be God-given. Oh. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we may not understand why and where we are there. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you just about everyone that I know, in hindsight, they have benefit in yes. some way or another. And the benefit doesn't always have to come from that person that you take care of. I mean, you know that. Amen. A lot of times we look for the benefits that come from, well, I did this and I did yes. that. That person may never be able to do for you what so true. Seek so the one. Mm -hmm. Seek right. Bishop, I want to tell you, I was um, 
subbing and working. And I said, oh, tomorrow is my day that I got to get up early. It's cold, you know, <laughs> to go to my father's house. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, when I got over there, I didn't want to leave, you know, because, he'll, you know, sometimes he'll start telling me about s stories when he was in the army or when he was a kid and all those kind of things. And I just get relaxed just like I was, you know, real young and just listening to all of his stories. That's that, mo that father and daughter yes. love. And I, I didn't want to leave him. Yes. So. And that interaction, the rest of the students never would experience right that personal relationship that you had right that were reserved for you that is a jewel it within is itself. it really is sometimes people think a jewel is all it's a monetary thing there is far more wealth and riches that's not monetary that's something you go spend and throw anyway most money anyway you're gonna get rid of it right right and you're gonna be healthy enough to use it anyway so we never know what is god's purpose for us Right. And one of my favorite things I talk to some of my babies when I'm, I call them all my babies. While I'm counseling, because a lot of the church members are out of town. So I might spend two hours on telephone talking to my baby. Mm -hmm. And I'll be sharing, and God used us to minister that way. Like I said, everybody got a different ministry. Everybody wants you to be the way to, oh, if you are a, a pastor, you're supposed to look this way. I don't know what a pastor's supposed to look like. I don't know what a minister looks like. I don't know what a bishop's supposed to look But when God placed you there, you fall in the That's character right. that God That's has right. called you. Follow the assignment. Yes, but the right. babies I often talk about. I said, baby, you know something, and I know you being women and have children, you can identify with what I'm about to say. A lot of times, there's things you want in life. You would love to have. You remember the little baby you had when you're taking him from nursing a bottle, and start giving him spoon feeding him. And you know they love that fruit, that peaches and the, right. and the dollar. Oh, they love that. <laughs> And as you began to feed them and train them and wean them, they want what you have in the spoon. They want it really bad. But as you get it closer to their mouth, their hands reach out and they knock it out of your hand. Yeah. <laughs> That's happened. <laughs> what happened there? It's not that the baby didn't want it, but they didn't know how to get it to their own mouth. Wow. The what am I saying? Too. What is that? <laughs> tell, me, tell me why the adult do that too. I mean, that they change from a child to adult. Once a man and twice a child. Yeah, yeah, that's they that's would that. knock it out of your hand too. <laughs> but, but, that, but that analogy is what I'm trying to say. We want good things, mm -hmm. but we don't know how to get it. Right. God is trying to give us something. Mm -hmm. But in our anxiety, we knocking it out of his hand. We don't know how to get what's good for us. That's why the scripture said in all thy ways to acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. The baby wanted the fruit. Oh boy, that baby wanted that fruit to give him mm -hmm. that spoon. <laughs> but in his anxiety, don't we do the same thing spiritually when God yes. is trying to bless us? Bless us, right. yes. He's trying to bless us and show us and give us something. Later in hindsight, say, oh, I see what God was doing now. But we had to trust him even before we know right. what he's doing. Praise God. You know, I, when you're talking about me, you know, preacher, I can't shut up on that type of thing. <laughs> Praise right God. Down. Because we're talking about faith. And I often tell people, what is faith? What is God's definition? What is the Bible definition of faith? Now faith. Is the substance of things hopeful. Oh, I'm hoping for it. <laughs> the evidence, the evidence don't of me to preach it. Not seen. You can't see it. You can't see it. Mm -hmm. But you're trusting mm -hmm. that he knows. Mm -hmm. He knows what you want. Right. But you just don't know how to get it. Get it. Right. True. You are trying to get it the way you understand to get it. And all the time, he's trying to feed you. He's trying to prepare you. He's trying to set you up for a blessing. Yeah. And you are... What happened to the children of Israel? <laughs> Began to complain. Right. He right. delivered them out of years of slavery. Mm -hmm. Someone was born in slavery. Right. They forgot to cry <laughs> to. They they began to cry to God, but then they start crying at Moses. Why you do what you did? You should have left us where we were at. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and when the Lord tried to deliver you, whether spiritually or naturally, now I'm gonna skip the subject just a little bit. I hope okay. I bring some meat back to the table. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the same thing happened with young love. 
if they don't stick with it through the hard times, how can they experience the good times? Sometimes we see things with our eyes and we miss the whole point. And sometimes even in the family, uh, uh, what one person is working together to achieve. And I'm going to say this, some ladies have helped their husband through school and so forth and so on. Not knowing that was his blessing and when he becomes successful, mm -hmm. he found somebody else. Yep. Took know, the blessing, that. that's it. Yep. The very right. thing that helped you, you forgot, that, right. was your blessing. It was the blessing. And you could have been greater blessed, but because... True. Isn't it so sad? Mm. We have to see. The Bible talking about mercy and care and all the way around. That's caregiving, isn't it? Right. That's understanding. But we don't go into caregiving expecting a bonus, a billion dollars, no, and so forth. We, don't. we go out of love. Right. And what God got for you, nobody can't take from you. That's true. But when we walk, and I can't get away from Esther, I mean, uh, 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 what was it, and Naomi? She had a, a, a daughter-in-law. Ruth, Ruth and Oprah. Ruth, yeah. And Oprah, yeah. She had a daughter-in-law. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yes, she and did. And when she lost her hus uh, their husband, they all lost their husband. Yes. One, she told her to go back she, out of love. Yeah, one went back. back, right. I ain't got no more children for you. I can't have none, so <laughs> mine's going to find you another husband. But the one that sacrificed. Mm -hmm. Sacrificed being a young lady. Mm -hmm. Sacrificed began to start another family hung with that mother -in -law. Yes, That was a sacrifice. That was caregiving. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. like uh oh, that. you never thought about that, did yeah, you? I like that. That's good. That's good. <laughs> that was, was caregiving. caregiving. Mm -hmm. her, her mother-in-law couldn't go out there and work in the field the and old, clean. She did it, yeah. But she did it for her mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. And she loved the God and her mother-in-law so much. Your God would be, go back in the mall back. No. My God is your God, and right, we I'm going with I'm you going on. With you yeah. right, right, you right, right. Amen. Yeah. Well, you know the rest of the story. Somebody at home might not know. But <laughs> yes. God abundantly blessed, blessed her. her. He yes. sure did. When the wealthiest man in the country. Oh. Mm. <laughs> but the heart that she had for her mother in law. Now, I'm not just telling people to care give because of what the end result is. But it's there's true. so much true. beauty mm -hmm. in giving and caring. And loving, like the uh, the author. I know she write a lot of books and a lot of poetry. That was something stuck in us anyway, too. Praise God! I started writing when I was in the slogans and so forth, and, and young people. But what I'm saying is, a lot of things that God give you, that is her ministry. You minister to sure what is. God has yes, put that to is you. That's her ministry, right? And regardless of what everybody else see or see, understand, that's true. And you know, the enemy gets in there because we began to look around. Mm -hmm. Why are you helping me? Why can't you do this? <laughs> it wasn't meant for them. But when God made yeah. you that shining star, everybody said, oh, how you did it. Mm -hmm. By being faithful mm -hmm. and sticking to what God has given me. And I'm not going to say it's not tempted to see and do what everybody else is doing. Because that's temptation. Hey, why, why? I'm sacrificing, but one day. It's going to pay off. Yes. Someone said grass is greener on the other side. side. Somewhere I read, <laughs> grass is greener on the other side, and someone come back, but the water bill is higher, too. <laughs> yep, yep, that's true. I like that. Y'all seem to be getting anointed here. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> well, I like to say that that's why I wrote the book, so people could be encouraged that don't have a journey like to follow through by and love locked in each one of you today so strong has called your name and you shared it with everybody and mm -hmm. it's just been great I just want to thank the bishop again for inviting us to do this I, I would like to say it's not just caring for parents I, I would like to say a prayer for the people I wrote a prayer in my book for the people that are in the nursing facilities mm -hmm. People that are not even talking about what they're going through, but they need some encouragement. Yes. Can I say a prayer for those people? I have a prayer in this book mm -hmm. for those people that may don't, may not even have a clue on how to pray. And I would like to say this prayer for them. And the prayer is, Our Father who art in heaven, 
We need you in every way. Release your angels of love and protection. Thank you for including me in your morning wake up call. It is because of your grace and mercies that I can operate in caring for others. Cleanse me as I use the Bible as my washing sink. Create in me a clean heart and rinse all the residue. Fill me with healing power. Remove anything that should not be in me. Mend me so that I can help put some pieces, some peace and pieces back into others. Root out any unproductive cells. Open any blocked arteries, veins, and rebuild me. You are the creator, and we know that there is nothing new under the sun, the S-O-N. Let me move and operate in a healed body, mind, and spirit. Restore me so that I can help others and to honor you and show gratitude in doing this for other ones. And amen. Praise yeah. God. We yeah. thank God. And believe it or yeah. not, we're at the end of the show. Oh, <laughs> praise God. God. Ah, so yes. the end up, we're going to start out, praise God, Dr. Fitton. We're going to briefly, uh, about a minute, summarize and give us your information again. we go all the way back to uh, Marsal and then we're close. Okay. I'm Dr. LaJoel Fitton from Macedonia Church on 27 South Gettysburg. And I was here because uh, Marcella Ash Williams invited me because I had a part in her book, which mm -hmm. is called Love Locked In. Mm -hmm. A beautiful book. If you don't have it, you might want to get this for your library. And I enjoyed today because a lot was learned from other people, uh, more so than what I did. And caregiving, you have to begin to love people, it has mm -hmm. to come within. Uh, you know, the devil's out there. He sometimes he tells you, "Oh, you don't need to do that. He can do it himself." But mm -hmm. you know, I just said, "That's my father. That's the only one that I had besides the father up there." Amen. All right. Yeah. Amen. And I wonder, Jean Morgan. I go to Mount Zion Transformation Ministries, and I have really enjoyed myself. I appreciate you inviting me, and I just want to end this with a song that encouraged me then, and it still encourages me, and it was written by Bishop William Morgan James. It says, it's so nice to be nice. It's just so nice just to live right. It's just so nice to let somebody know that you're nice. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and of course, you know, I am the Arthur, and I'm appreciative of Bishop letting us come in today. And I want you to know love has locked in each one of us some mm -hmm. kind of way. And we are the strong that uh, has called, God has called us in our uh, assignment to do whatever it is that we're doing. I just want you guys out there to be encouraged if you have to do this, if you have to take care of someone. Know that you need to lock in love in order to do it. That's the only way you do it right. Mm -hmm. And may God bless you, any of you out there that are going through now and just don't know what to do, don't have a clue. Uh, you can get the book. It's something in there that will encourage you and let you know that you know you're not alone. And uh, again, my name is Marcella Ash. Um, you can reach me at 937-760-6168. And God bless you. And out of all the beautiful things that you have in your book, you have poetry, you have writing, and also you have legal information yeah. for those people that may not realize. So it is rich. Uh, I think every library should carry it and definitely should be in every home. One thing about it I want to share with you today, also, you need to love yourself. Yes. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. So if you don't love yourself, you can't really effectively love anyone. Can you really love that man or that woman in the mirror? Once you learn love, then love can spread abroad. Caretaking. May God bless you. May heaven smile on you. Is our prayer.